takes them up to eight hours to become five times larger and to develop the lysosomes. So first line of defense, the barrier. Second line of defense, the local macrophage, the resident macrophage. Third line of defense, neutrophils. So within an hour or two, if you look at that area, what would you find over there? Neutrophil. You will not find macrophages. Why not? Because macrophages are not present in the abundant pool to reach there. Then if you see that six, seven, eight hours later, you will find macrophages. And from then on, you would find primarily macrophages. That is why they say acute infections, acute inflammation, neutrophil, chronic inflammations, macrophages. Macrophages need a signal to be formed to be there, so please do not forget this. First line of defense, the barrier. Second line of defense, the macrophages resident in that area. Third line of defense are the neutrophils, which are called by the interleukin-6 produced by the macrophages. Then in neutrophils, which come over there, would crea create the chemotactic factors, and these would then go and call the um, macrophages. What are the chemotactic factors coming from the neutrophils? Remember, IL-3? which would go to the bone marrow and cause all cells to be increased in their formation. Remember granulocyte, monocyte, colony stimulating factor, GM-CSF. Remember granulocyte CSF. Re remember monocyte CSF. We've talked about it in the past. So let me just quickly write them here. GM-CSF, granulocyte, monocyte, colony stimulating factors. Monocyte, colony stimulating factors. Granulocyte, colony stimulating factors. IL-3. IL-3 goes to the bone marrow and acts on the bone marrow and enhances the activity of formation of all kinds of cells. These cells, of course, granulocyte would increase the granulocytes. Monocytes would increase the macrophages. So when the neutrophils come in there, they would cause these things to happen and then the macrophages would arrive. So please do not forget this. This is why when you check a tissue which is undergoing infection or inflammation, you can look at it and say, well, this seems to be more neutrophils, this seems to be acute inflammation, or this seems to be more monocytes or macrophages, and this seems to be chronic inflammation. It's very simple. We have more neutrophils, we do not have that many monocytes. But the very first time we have a little bit of monocytes because they're present there. So IL-6 is very, very important. That is how macrophages call the neutrophils. That is how acute inflammation is taken care of. It is started that way. Remember this, macrophage is such a bad dude. It is such a strong cell. Not only it starts the acute inflammation, it starts the acquired immune system as well. It's such a central player. If you don't know macrophage, in my opinion, you will not be a good doctor. So be careful of the macrophage. It bites very bad, but macrophage is a very important cell to know. Now, if we continue on to the other um, chemical factors, macrophage is um, releasing. Interleukin-8 is also released by the macrophage. Interleukin-8 is not unique to macrophage. It is also actually present in the endothelial cells. Remember, viable plaid bodies which are present in the endothelial cells, these are small circular histological structures which have integrins and the von Willebrand factor. And in in case of chemotactic factors, these viable plaid bodies move out onto the surface of the endothelial cells and they have the integrins coming out and the wall will brand factor. I talked about them in the previous lecture with the neutrophils. So that is also IL-8. Similarly, neutrophil chemotactic is, factor is also done by the IL-8. Now one more thing, I think I, uh, I mixed the IL-6 with the IL-8. IL-8 is the one which is the neutrophil chemotactic factor. IL-6 acts on the liver. It's a pro-inflammatory cytokine. <coughs> Excuse me. It acts on the liver and it causes the increase in secretion of acute phase proteins. What are the acute phase proteins? C-reactive proteins, the proteins of the com complement system, the proteins of the coagulation system, ceruloplasmine, hepcidine, and so on. These are, C these are the acute phase proteins. These are the proteins which are used in the acute inflammation. So IL-6 goes and acts on the liver. So it goes from the macrophage. So here is the liver, IL-6 on the liver. IL-1, IL-1 onto the 
onto the brain for the fever. Then we talked about the IL-8. IL-8 is going to go and act on the neutrophils to act as a chemotactic factor for them. Then uh, we have IL-10. So IL-10 is funny. What we have is do not forget IL-10 and IL-12. These two are very important chemical factors which separate or which strike a balance between are we going to handle an infection via cytotoxic activity that means T cells killing the cells or via antibiotic activity that means B cells releasing the chemical factors. IL-10 and IL-12 they create this balance. We see IL-12 over here. IL-12 coming out of the macrophage would go act on the helper T helper 0 cell which would cause it to become mature into T helper 1 cell which would then release the interleukin 2 remember interleukin 2 which causes the cytotoxic T cell to become activated why do I keep saying remember I had taught this in the bigger picture uh, immunology lecture 1 and 2 so go back and read those if you have not but anyways this is the IL-12 cycle so if you look at the IL-12 IL-12 is promoting what? It is promoting the cytotoxic killing of the pathogens. On the other hand, if we have IL, so let's say, if I take this out, and if I made the T helper 2 cells, T helper 2 cells, these cells, when they are activated, they release the IL-10. And their function is that they work on T helper 1, so IL-10. Similarly, IL-10 is released from the macrophages as well. That causes the suppression of the cytotoxic side, and that would enhance. Uh, we have not talked about it, but we have talked in the previous lecture in the, uh, in the uh, introduction that T helper 2 will then cause the B cells to become active and B cells are responsible for antibiotic formation. So just imagine this, if we have IL-10 then this side of functionality is suppressed and this functionality is enhanced. So that means we would handle that pathogen via antibiotics. On the other hand, if we have IL-12 then this side would be enhanced and this side would be suppressed. That means we would handle that pathogen by killing it through the cytotoxic cells. So there is a balance which is struck. And then on the way back, when the T helper cells send the interferon gamma, then we know that even macrophage has been liberated to say, go ahead and start killing these pathogens. And we talked about it, how that happens. So that is about the T help, uh, IL-10 and IL-12. IL-12 is a very, very important thing. There's a thing called the IL-12 gamma interferon axis. What is that? Is that macrophage is releasing IL-12 and activating the acquired arm on the other hand the acquired arm is then causing the macrophage to become active as well so this axis this axis the IL-12 gamma interferon axis this is a very important axis this is a bridge between the innate arm and the acquired arm where they are amplifying each other's actions very very important thing to remember and keep an eye on this this bridge if in immunology one understand one concept that is to understand this bridge okay so if we continue on tumor necrosis factor we talked about it before the uh, tumor necrosis factor is released from the macrophages as well and as we saw it's a pro-inflammatory chemical substance we also saw that inside the kupfer cells when it is released from there, it would act on the stellate cell of the liver and cause the collagen to be secreted and fibrosis. So really, it, it would be uh, causing the inflammation. On the other hand, then we have the tumor TGF beta, the tumor growth factor. So that is a very, very interesting re thing. So remember that whenever the immune system is functional, whenever the immune system is functional, at some point we have to ramp down, we have to clamp down, we have to stop that immune activity as well otherwise the immune activity would not stop and we'll become the victims of it and that would become an autoimmune disease 
So 